Self-care is necessary for building resilience, the ability to bounce back from adversity. It involves taking time to tend to social, emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental health needs. And it aligns with Philippians 4.8, where it says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We are in a series on learning the seven keys to resilience. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the key of self-care. Hey there, my name is Laura, founder of Hope Made Strong, where we equip you and your ministry team as you support and care for others in your community. Now, the whole notion of self-care has really become popular in secular and humanistic thought. However, the concept of tending to those mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, and social needs is founded in the Bible. But like many other biblical concepts, it has been distorted. Self-care has been found to be a core building block for surviving and thriving, and it builds resilience. Now, I understand that this isn't necessarily new information. We've heard countless times that to be healthy and to avoid burnout, we need to exercise, eat well, get good sleep, and have some downtime and fun. But if all you think of is vacations and green smoothies and going to spin class when you hear of self-care, then I'm not surprised that it has moved down to the bottom of your to-do list. All of these things take time, money, and a lot of effort and energy. They become just one more thing on a very long list of things I should be doing. But the goal of self-care is not to indulge in and fulfill selfish desires. The goal is to live out the great commandment found in Matthew 22, which commands us to love one another as we love ourselves. Taking time to care for yourself and to refuel is not about whether or not you deserve it. It's about God wanting to love on his children. He wants you to know him and he wants to refresh you. The time you spend refreshing and refueling is time well spent. When life becomes hard, when relationships erode and stress builds, but you're facing it with a full tank because you've spent time refueling. It is so much harder to overcome struggles when you are weary. Tending to your spiritual, emotional, physical, social, and mental needs helps you thrive despite challenges. A research study was done in 2013 on what makes those serving in ministry resilient. 73 pastors representing 26 states met three times a year for six years. Their conversations were transcribed into 12,000 pages that all centered around one question. What does it take to survive and thrive in pastoral ministry? They came up with five primary themes. Now, four of them are what you would expect. They're spiritual formation, emotional and cultural intelligence, a healthy marriage and family, and strong leadership and management skills. However, the fifth theme, self-care, seemed kind of out of place. The study determined that self-care was necessary to developing a resilient and fruitful ministry. As ministry caregivers, it is essential to be aware of your needs and to prioritize time to tend to them if you want longevity in ministry. Self-care is all about accepting the love of God as his children. We don't have to do anything to deserve his rest. We are primarily to find rest, joy, peace, and love in God. And out of that overflow of love, we are equipped to serve and care for others. In 2 Timothy 4, 6, Paul describes serving as being poured out as as a drink offering. Caregiving and offering empathy to others is giving of ourselves. It's self-care or tending to those spiritual, emotional, physical, social, and mental needs that fill us back up. Self-care can be as simple as using your commute to intentionally transition from work to home. It can be taking a professional development course or (laughs) easy as eating lunch with real food at lunchtime at a real table, not in a meeting. (laughs) Self-care could be developing a bedtime routine to allow for better sleep or even adjusting those notifications on your device so you're not being distracted every ping and beep. 
Like the other keys to resilience, self-care is a discipline. It's hard to acknowledge that we are weary or that we need rest. It's hard to tend to our needs when others around look as though they are in more need than you. It can feel counterintuitive to the call to serve. As a supporter, it can feel very hypocritical to encourage others to tend to their needs when you yourself are struggling with feeling weary and overwhelmed. It's easy to spot the needs in others and have a blind spot for yourself. But self-care is not selfish. Self-care is leadership. I encourage caregivers and ministry leaders to build an awareness of when they need self-care. One way of recognizing when we need to tend to ourselves is to look out for that must be nice syndrome. And there's a link in the show notes to learn more about that below. But simply must be nice syndrome is really when we see other people engaging in self-care activities and we think to ourselves, oh, that must be nice. I've created a checklist of self-care ideas that don't take a lot of time, energy, or money. Use these as a starting point to developing ideas that are what are self-care for you and as a tool to encourage others to practice self-care. And if you'd like to hear more about the other six keys to resilience, check out hopemadestrong.org slash blog or subscribe and be notified when videos are posted. Thanks for connecting and take care.